You said two o'clock? Two o'clock. Two o'clock Thursday. Special meeting. Thursday? It yes. Is Thursday is yeah. the 18th. Correct. Thursday at 2 Yeah, I can do that. At 2 p.m. I'm going to mm -hmm. get stitches removed. <laughs> and then this is to consider a budget amendment to allocate funds for the skate park for $180,000. 180, okay. And then the appropriate language resolution would be presented by Thursday. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry, Mayor. Uh, I didn't get her name, the one that presented the skate park. Maybe you can explain to some of the citizens that listening, that was listening to you out in the audience, what does the skate yeah, park consist of? Does it be open year round? How would it run? What? Uh, sure. My name is Alexander Borngester. I'm Alexander, a grand writer okay. for the city. Um, the Pontiac Skate Park would be a 10,000 square foot concrete skate park that would be free and open to the public. That would be an operation year round given that it um, Weather permitting? No. Mm -hmm. um, they have not decided on a, on a location specifically for the park, but there are several options which were presented um, at our ARP town hall hosted at Oakland University. Um, what other types of questions uh, would you have? Well, you know, the only, I, I do have one concern. So you don't have a location? You don't right? have a location? You, they have you need a location. Locations. Um, Oakland Park was one of the proposed locations. Yes. Galloway Park was one of the locations. Well, it was brought to me first, I, I believe, okay. Galloway. I would like well, it in Galloway. Since I'm giving you the money, I think maybe you should go in Galloway. We're not going to fight over where it's going to be. Let's uh -huh. get the money first. I mean, that makes sense. No, it don't have to be named. Let's I mean, have it's, all, let's it's have all about the citizens because I don't have skate. Have so you want to be Galloway Park and they can skate right on into the lake. Right. Okay, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Well, nothing is at Galloway. I, I want something at Galloway. Galloway gets careful, nothing. Mary. I won't go into the lake. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, and the mean, I mean, really, seriously, uh, Attorney Sharp, can they put that, like, in a resolution or something that it goes to Galloway? Can you guys do that? No. I don't think no. that's going to happen. No. Okay, we have a... Um we, 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 need, need we need roll call. Okay. Because everybody wants to go Mi home except for me. Miller? Yes. Pedala? Yes. Shramsky? Yes. Taylor Barks? What am, I, what am I voting for? You're voting yes a for a meeting, meeting on, on Thursday, Thursday at 2 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Four yeas. <laughs> okay. Now, we got that done. Let's do to number 12, which is the resolution to approve a budget amendment for a fiscal year 2021-2022 to allocate a total of 63,000 to the general fund GL account 101-206-702-000 to a deputy finance director position. You guys be quiet down there. Okay. Yes, Madam Mr. Mayor. Carrington. This, this is uh, the mayor is presenting this item. Thank you. I will call Mr. Carrington when I need him to speak uh, as the department head. Whoa. Number 12. Oh, no. Got caught with the helicopter, did you? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> mayor it Neely. is time to go mayor home. Neely and Flint. You got your it's time stuff. to leave. There's nothing been said about a helicopter for the city of Pontiac yet. <coughs> mayor Neely has done that because he's called the crisis. Okay, so. Of, uh, so just to set that are we talking about the deputy right, finance 12, director? Number 12 is the deputy finance director. As mm -hmm. uh, council will know, that in the city charter, uh, the, uh, the uh, deputy, the department head, has the authority to appoint a deputy for his department or her department. Okay. Uh, we do need a deputy because, as you know, with all the things that are coming to finance, uh, that the finance director has had a lack of capacity uh, and needs a deputy, uh, which I totally agree to both. So we have um, brought back Mr. Sakarbawa, who was the treasurer, to bring him back to the deputy finance director position. Uh, it's just that the budget does not, that was set by council back in July 1st, or June, rather, of 2021, does not have these funds in it for to pay fully for this deputy uh, finance director position. So uh, according to the needs of the city um, city government, uh, we do ask you to pass this budget amendment for fiscal year 2021-22 to allocate a total of an additional $53,000 to the general fund account so that we can uh, pay for the um, 
deputy finance director that is so uh, sorely needed uh, and asked for by our finance director. Smith? You know, this is a study session and we have a new administration coming in in less than two months. I'm going to say no. We'll bring this back next week for the president and the pro tem and um, the finance subcommittee chairperson. I believe that's her title. Yeah. Oh, so I'd I'm like going to, make to let a comment on it. That. I mean, let us make a comment. I don't know if Megan wants to make one. Megan, you got to make a comment. You want to make a comment? Okay, I got to oh. make one for this. I, I, I think it needs to be explained to the audience why I won't be voting for this. I won't even entertain it. Actually, it should be taken off. It's just like hiring someone to come into your job and you're getting ready to leave in another month. I mean, it's a new administration that's coming. Right. Okay. Like I said, we have new administration. We new have new council, mayor, new, new mayor, He's everything. Ask the department and then we ask for a deputy mayor, uh, deputy, uh, find, allow the next administration to do that. Exactly. Council chair. They'll, they'll do that when they come. And so that's just where I'm at with it. Now, and I'm just one person. I, I agree. But I, the chair. I, I totally agree. Yeah, this is yeah, wrong. Make no sense. Okay, you guys. Okay. We heard you, Monique. If I just want to let you guys. Attorney uh, Sharp. Oh, that's sorry. fine. If you guys can recall, you specifically did not vote to put the position in. Right. We took right. it out. So this person is sitting in a position that's not funded because you specifically took action not to add the position. Exactly. But you know, but during Attorney the Sharp, that's been our night all night. I mean, the public is going to see a lot I, when we leave. Letting, They're letting, going to learn a lot of what we fought. Everybody know They're you guys voted not to have to do. Girl, we have a mayor that wants a helicopter. I don't care what she says. <laughs> Okay, so let's go on to, that's going to come back next week with the president, the pro tem, and the finance subcommittee chair here. Um, we are going to go to number 13, which is resolution to accept $90,000 grant from Next 50 initiative to support infrastructure improvements at the Pontiac Senior Centers. Yes, this is just a, uh, a summary um, role that uh, council can play. We're happy for the grant that uh, we have uh, received, have applied for. Alexander Bowen District and spoke to this grant for $90,000 uh, that we got from Next 50 to support infrastructure improvement at our Pontiac Senior Centers, which we've heard uh, so many people say we have many needs there and we have some projects that people have uh, offered to help to fund us to fund. So this is just a, a, a customary situation in which the council just needs to accept the money so we can put it in our budget and spend it. Alexander Borngesser was the one who applied for that, and she, we were very happy when she told us that I see you we have received this, okay. but uh, You're welcome. Uh, we, she may want to say a few words as well. This is a pretty straightforward um, opportunity. The, this is a resolution to adopt and accept the $90,000 from the Next 50 initiative. Mm -hmm. um, this is flexible spending money um, allocated towards uh, infrastructure improvements. There's no matching requirement. Um, uh, it's very, very straightforward. Okay, thank you very much. I see Councilwoman. I do Taylor have one Burks. question with that. So does Doris. And I do. Councilwoman Taylor Burks. Oh, uh, thank you. You're welcome. I so think, mm -hmm. in my opinion only, that the rest of these that's on here should be tabled till next week when we have a full council. This is not making sense to me. A study session we have, to, we're gonna go through them. They're all gonna be voted on next week, but we still are going to follow through with the agenda. That's one of my biggest complaints. We don't follow through with the agenda. We have to continue a city business. Um, thank you for your opinion and thank you for your sharing. Just one second, Attorney Sharp. Okay. Councilwoman Miller. Um. Just 90, uh, where am I? Uh, We're in number 13. 13. This uh, grant for $90,000, you said no money match or nothing with the city. Monique. And this would go between both centers, correct? Yes. Ruth Peterson and, and Bowen Center. While we on that, how is the parking lot over there coming out with the grant money over there? How did I went over there and drove over there last week and I thought I was seeing a nightmare. What happened with the parking lot with Bowen Center? I can't speak to that. I'm not I'm not sure what's going on with the parking lot. Uh, so we got some grant money that we 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 blowing here. I mean, this it's it's who are these contractors? It's it's terrible. I mean, I ask any citizen go over there and look at the parking lot. We don't oh my know gosh. if they ran into infrastructure problems or not when they were doing it. Mary, it's like somebody took a hammer and beat the parking lot up. Well, uh, that Okay, Garland says he knows. Uh, through the chair. So 
ASI paving put on the first coating just so where people will be able to vote right. on election day okay. at the Bowen Center. So where we would not have to move precincts four, five, and okay. six. Okay. I do not know why the rest of the work has not been completed since election day. We're two weeks past the election. We've had decent weather. Correct. So the parking lot needs to be completed. Okay. The parking lot is not completed. That's why it is sinking because only a coating was put on just so where we would be able to facilitate voting on Tuesday, November the so 2nd. So basically, they this did it the election day and they kept ASI. repeating, riding on it because I Correct. went through there and, and I, actually a, a citizen called me and said, oh my God, look at the parking lot over here. Well, this I drove is over there. typical for ASI. So we, we need to find, and then it needs to respond to when will the work in essence, be completed on the parking lot. Right. So we need to get back completed. to Abdul and to Al Cooley to find out what's going on with that. But that is not 13. That is not the $90,000 right. for I, the initiative to it. We're appropriating this money from CDBG, and it looked like the citizens deserve better. I mean, the sidewalk, okay. we've got complaints with that. We got that was C That's CDBG. This is something <gasps> else. Doris, okay. you can't leave. We won't have a quorum. We won't have a quorum. Doris, come sit down, please. We have a. I have a headache. I know. Mayor, move it faster and go with them over it. Okay. Well, yeah, but we keep getting people speaking. That's what happens. Can I just ask a question? Okay, so we will come back next month. You have a question, Monique? Yeah, just to um, make it quick. Yep. Uh, as far as this is concerned, just want to know if you could provide the uh, conditions for the grant award. Um, just want to make sure that there is nothing like the Kaboom grant situation. So right. if you can just provide yeah. the uh, conditions for the grant award um, before the next meeting. The award letter was included in here as well. This says all funds awarded are contingent on the fulfillment of the conditions of the grant award. These conditions are listed in the closed agreement. Is that agreement here? The agreement um, looks just like this, but I'll provide it to you. Yeah, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. It's flexible yeah, spending. Please, pro um, please provide it to us yeah, all week. for next week. Right. Will do. Okay, thank you. Okay. We'll so we'll back. vote on this again next week. It's only a study session. Number 14 is resolution to approve the purchase of the Microsoft 365 solution and associated costs not to exceed six, the 6000 $953. Madam Chair, this is a scheduled upgrade to our IT system, as we told you. Right. We We've gone before. through this over and over. Okay. This is like four weeks going on. We will discuss this next okay. week. All right. Um, resolution to approve a zoning map amendment request ZMA All right. 2084 pin 64-14-17-130-005 and 64-14-17-130-006 to amend the current site zoning M1 light manufacturing to M1 light manufacturing with CR conditional rezoning zoning district. This is gonna be Mr. Gustafsson, thank yes, you. Mr. Gustafsson is here as my planning manager. And yes, I'm I know. I'm waiting for him to speak. Thank I you very much. I am speaking for him. He will speak after I have presented the item as it is my duty of mayor. Oh, this do. is what you get to deal with next year, daughter. There we go. Okay. Oh, so, that's right. She won't be here. It is the respect of okay. the <laughs> Madam Mayor. To allow the mayor to present the administrative Please. item. No, that's, that's the mayor's oh. plans. This is I'm never, you know what? Me. Until you became the mayor, we never went through this. The persons always took the, the podium and they always spoke when they were called upon. The mayor kept their mouth shut. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, may I proceed with presenting the agenda? No, I want Mr. Gustafson to go forward. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Gustafson. A, My head even with the fight the respect home. that is normally afforded to the mayor of uh, 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 the elected representative of the people uh, because I honor you as our uh, uh, department head for planning I will ask you at this time to go ahead and present the agenda more. item uh, number 15 for the zoning oh, amendment. thank you me too fast. <laughs> um, thank you um, madam uh, chair uh, <laughs> madam mayor and city council uh, we have two zoning map amendments for you for your consideration. Uh, the first one here is item number 15, ZMA 20-08. 
Uh, it's, the applicant is Sheffield Holdings. It is near the southwest corner of uh, Walton and also uh, Baldwin. Uh -huh. And uh, it currently zoned M1, and they're looking to do a conditional rezoning on that light manufacturing use. Okay. Okay. And did you mirror Randy? It's yeah. Randy's. Randy. It is Randy's district, and I believe the applicant is here and can answer any of your questions. Oh, that's him. I was saying. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, they're going to vote on this next week, so I hate to ask you if you can come back, back. next week when Randy will be here, Pro Tem will be here, and this is his district. Yes, yeah, so they're requesting uh, a rezoning with conditions uh, to <clears> facilitate <throat> with those conditions as it relates to propose a medical marijuana grow facility, which would be located outside or adjacent to actually the Walton Boulevard overlay district, as you know, very fondly of right. the last several years. Um, and also the conditional agreement uh, is included in your packet for your review. Uh, here is a little bit of a site context to give you kind of an idea of where the site is. Oh, there's my little Gloria, wait one more. There it is, okay. So here's the railroad tracks. We have Baldwin, a little bit of uh, Walton just further to the north. It's roughly about almost a little bit less than an acre of vacant land uh, next to industrial use. And the from a planning perspective, uh, it is the site is zoned uh, mixed use of uh, industrial and commercial uses uh, located on that site and also adjacent areas. The uh, zoning map that I'm showing you is, so you can see, oops, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, right here, okay. So here's a site outlined in red, represents the site, and it's surrounded by more uh, M1 light manufacturing uses. Uh, here we have Walton, and also uh, Joslin Boulevard running um, north, uh, excuse me, Baldwin running north and south. This map over here represents the existing uh, o medical marijuana overlay district for Walton Boulevard. You can see it kind of dropping down, and this site is directly adjacent to that. The applicant is proposing to build approximately 10,000 square feet of uh, medical marijuana grow facility at that location. This is a similar project, if you remember correctly, uh, in District 4, roughly about a year ago, uh, over at uh, the en dead end of West New York and also Richard. Uh, you did, council did, approve unanimously uh, for the similar type of condition and also similar type of proposed use that's being considered. Uh, in our findings uh, that's included within your packet uh, is noted in regards to we're looking going from an M1 light manufacturing to an M1 with conditional rezoning. Uh, it does, lo it is located, we understand, outside of the medical marijuana grow facility outside of the Walton Boulevard overlay district. It does match in, of the goals and objectives of our future land use. The zoning designation is consistent with the future land use plan and map. Uh, it does meet all the requirements as it relates to that M1 uh, light manufacturing standards and the applicant understands that any future development will need to comply with all city uh, standards, processes, procedures, and also obtaining a grow license. With that, if I'll answer any questions that you may have uh, for this evening. And if you would be so inclined, if you'd be willing to approve this uh, project here tonight, they'll be and rescinding the rules. We can't approve anything tonight because we are not bubbling this Okay, I appreciate it. Uh, the applicant is here if you have any questions for the applicant also. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Appreciate it. And we have number 16. Mr. Gustafson, could you continue? Sure. Uh, the next uh, zoning map amendment is actually a request from. Uh, myself or the planning division. And this one here is basically to uh, correct a, an error on our zoning map. Okay. 
So parcel number 007 is J.C. Park. Okay. 008 is Bosnick. Okay. okay? And so here, let me just go to the map that's most important. So on this graphic, here we have the, uh, here, okay, there. Okay, this blue outline represents the property line of Bosnick Truck Center. Okay. As you can see, the current zoning map shows it as a perfect square. And what we want to do is basically convert a portion of the 007, okay, okay which is part of Bosnick, and put that into C-3 as corridor commercial. Property, this being J.C. Park, is 007. And here you can see that it's been mistakenly illustrated where we would like to just remove that and turn that back into R-1, which is the current zoning of our parks in the city of Pontiac. So it, it is a trying to correct an error on something that uh, limits, obviously, Bosnick in regards to in the future planning and design and construction and improvements that they would like to make on their site. So we're going to make this, when we the plan, we're going to make it commercial. Correct. Okay. Yeah, this was just done years ago, incorrectly, is that? Yes. Okay. 